my name is Ann Fields. I'm founder of Peaceful Poses Kids Yoga. We are a traveling business. We travel to preschools, daycares, uh, public private schools. We also travel to youth organizations. We don't currently have a studio. We have all of our yoga mats and props and suitcases and bags and we wheel them in wherever the kids are to give kids yoga classes. All of the classes are designed just for kids. I have my RYT 200, which is my registered yoga teacher, uh, 200 hours. And I also have my RCYT, which is a 95 hour registered children's yoga teacher certification. All of my classes that I teach are kids yoga. And I have a team of amazing um, teachers that go out with me as well to deliver uh, the classes, lesson plans that I create. The lesson plan that I'd like to share with you today, I don't usually get to share things, so I thought today would be a good time to do it, is called Ride the Wave. And when we talk about Ride the Wave, it's when we go to the ocean and we have all these crashing waves, and sometimes even when we're little, they may even knock us down. So these crashing waves continue, and they're kind of like our stress and our worries that we have, and maybe even some of the unknown that is out there, but they keep coming. So then um, yoga, yoga for us, either grown up or even little, is that coral reef underneath. So when you think of the coral reef and you think of all the different little fish that are swimming there, there might be a sea turtle and they're moving slow. It's a very peaceful, serene environment. And the coral reef is, is our yoga, it's our breathing, it's our postures, it's, it's just how we move and how we can center and ground ourselves in a way. So that's Ride the Wave, because we can be in that coral reef and above all of those crashing waves can keep coming, they will, they will keep coming. And it's okay, because we, we have our yoga and we know where we can be peaceful inside, even in a world where it's, it might not be peaceful right now. So with that said, I have my liability. This is a liability form that I also have on my website. My website is uh, www.peacefulposeskidsyoga.com. Please visit, please send me a message if you want. You're welcome to do that. I love to hear from people. Um, so let me just read this to you, just so you're aware of the, the liability form. It says kids yoga, it says kids. If you have not reached your 18th birthday, you should get permission from your parents or guardians when doing poses in this video. Parents and guardians, the poses in this video involve movement, physical activity, and maintaining a pose or posture which may cause physical injury or other medical issues. Also, parents and guardians, please consult with a physician before your child performs activities in this video. Thank you so much. I'm gonna scoot around and we're gonna start with some breathing. So here we go. So when we start with breathing, I always start in, if you were little, uh, it would be crisscross applesauce. With my hands on my knees and my back is tall. So this is my mindful body. So if you're older, this is um, called Sukhasana. So it's, it's a yoga pose. Um, it's called easy pose, but we're sitting tall, so we're making sure our elbows are not on our knees, which I often see, but our hands are there, and we're sitting as tall as we possibly can. First thing, always on the mat, I also um, do some breathing. So let's start with, I brought my breathing ball with me, and let's just take a few breaths together. So as it opens, we take a breath in with an inhale, and then we exhale. Let's go again, breathing in. This time, let's breathe out our nose and make the ball get smaller. And again, breathing in. And breathing out. And one more. Breathing in. And breathing or a breathing ball at home, you can also try it with your hands. So my hands are just like this, and I take breathing in, pressing the pads of my fingers together, and breathing out. 
moms and dads, this is really good for your kid. It helps wire the two hemispheres of your brain. It helps it communicate. So again, breathing in, pressing the pads of those fingers together, and exhale out. And breathing in, and breathing out. And we have one more. hands to our knees, our spine is still very tall, and our chin goes to our chest very gently, and then we're going to roll over to the right side, and then we take our chin back down to our chest, maybe noticing any tension, any tightness in our shoulders, and then we're rolling over to the left. Really good. Let's do that one more time. I always say the top of my head is making a smile, so I take my head down. And then just roll it to one side. I'm not rolling it to the back. I'm just rolling it to the front. And then I take it right back down to the center and roll it over to the left. And then my head goes nice, straight, and tall. And my hands go to the side. So now I'm reaching up and over to one side. So a nice lateral stretch. And then coming up. And you can go the other way. So sometimes I call this for my little ones. I said, rolling a great big rainbow. I love rainbows. They make me very happy inside. So here we go again. We're reaching over for a lateral stretch. Keeping both of our sits bent on the ground. Our last one like this. And reaching over. And then this time we're taking both hands to the sky. We're taking our right hand across. And the one that's up here, I always say the one that's moving, that's sparkling, takes our hand behind us and we twist and we look behind us. So you can stay twisted. I'm going to look at the video so I can, can hear my voice. Twisting is really good for our body. And right now, this is a great time to twist. Twisting those organs, twisting the toxins out, taking a great big inhale, bringing our other hand across to our opposite knee. And then the hand that's up here to go is behind us. And we look back there, take a nice, great big twist. Okay. And then let's come back to center. We're taking our legs straight out in front of us and having our toes go to the sky. This is really good um, for a hamstring stretch. And our back has to stay tall. And this is sometimes really hard. So even this is a lot of work. So as I tell my children that I teach, we're reaching for our knee or our patella. So we learn our body anatomy as we go. And then we reach for our shin or our tibia. And then we can reach for our toes or our metatarsals. So again, if, if you can't reach here, it's okay. All of our yoga is gonna look a little different. And we're all different and that's, that's a good thing if we're all different. If you can reach your toes, you can try to put your hands over the balls of your feet a little bit if you want a deeper stretch. This is really good for us to do these nice deep stretches, especially with being in as much as we are right now. Now we're going to roll up and we're going to do that one more time. So we're reaching for our patella, we're reaching for our tibia, we're reaching for our metatarsal. We take our hands to the side of our shin, and this is our fibula. And then we sit up tall, and we just gently pat our feet up. Very good. So now we're going to move into butterfly pose. So butterfly pose, um, I always say we take the bottom of one foot, and it's really good sensory to feel the bottoms of our feet. So I always say we're making a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, or if you're like my family, we are allergic to peanut butter, so we do a sun butter and jelly sandwich, and we squish our feet together. Our hands go on our ankles and our spine grows tall. So from here, you can either fly like a butterfly, or if you're older, you can even take your toes and reach forward. There's all kinds of, this pose has many benefits. Very good, so here's our butterfly pose. That's wonderful. So now, let's take our knees to the sky. Take our hands to the sky. We're gonna reach them around. Hands go under our knees, and we're gonna go into boat pose. 
So bow pose, what I always say is to check behind you first, because sometimes we, we have a flat tire. And so if we get a flat tire, we just want to make sure we're safe. So let's just lift one leg up as we roll back on those sits bones. And we're going to come on up. And shoulders are down. Let's lift the other leg up. So now our boat pose, we can try to lift both legs up, belly in, and arms go out. So here's our boat pose. So if you were on, at the beach or at the ocean, you might see a boat go by. Our boat pose is, boat pose is very challenging. If you're young, you can come out of it. If you're older, you want to stay there. You can try to keep busy. You can row your boat this way. There's all kinds of things that you can do with boat pose. And then I always just like to take a little stretch as we go and reach down. So from here, sitting up tall, we're gonna swing our legs around and go into hero pose. So here's our hero pose. And in hero pose, let's just take a deep breath. We're gonna forward fold. So our belly tries to touch our thighs. Our hands go out and our head goes down. Maybe your forehead touches the mat. So it won't look like me because I'm looking up at you, but maybe you can bring that head down. So this is child's pose. Child's pose is a great place to go if we need a break. So in child's pose, we're just going to take a breath in and out. And again, breathing in and breathing out. Gently coming up to tabletop. So our wrists are over our shoulders, our knees are over our hips. And now this is called, this is tabletop, but we're going to do cats and cows. So in kids yoga, sometimes there are meows and our moves. So we round our back over. And if you're young, and if you want to do in cat pose, you can do a little meow. That's perfectly fine. And then when we arch our back, we're in cow pose. And we can do a little bit of a moo we need to as well. It's supposed to be fun. We're supposed to have a good time doing this. So here in this cow pose, let's take a big inhale. So if you're older, you can use your breath. As you exhale, you're going to go into cat pose. And as you inhale, you're going to go into cow. And you can repeat that as many times as you want. Right now, we're going to curl our toes under and lift our hips to down dog. So here's our downward dog. It may be your first down dog of the day. You can bend your knees if you want, called walking the dog. And today, we're just going to stay in our down dog and take a nice deep breath here. And exhale. And again, breathing in. And out. From here, walking our feet in. And we're going to roll up. So our feet are on the ground. I'm going to step back. You can stay where you are. We're moving into mountain pose. So mountain pose, our palms are forward. Our belly is in. Belly button is tall. We have a rainbow under our chin and we have a crown on our head. We stand tall. We stand with purpose. We stand with confidence. Very good. Let's take our hands to peace pose. Take a deep breath in and out. And again, we're going to breathe in and out. Very good. So now we take our hands to the sky. Our hands are still together. And we're just reaching to one side and then to the other. So if you're little, this could be our seaweed waving in the ocean. And if you're older, this pose is called crescent moon. Very good. So we're just going back and forth. Let's do one more each way. Very good. And then we take our hands back to heart center, taking a deep breath in and out. From here, let's go to warrior one. So let's start with our hands on our hips. I'm just moving up a little bit. So let's take one leg back. So it doesn't matter which leg. So my first leg, my front leg has a little bend. And my back leg is straight and my heel is down. So I bring my arms up to a warrior one. Very good. Let's take a deep breath in here and out. And again, in and out. Let's reach those arms around. Take 
our hands to our hips, straighten our leg, and now we're just going to move right into pyramid. So you can bring your hands below your knee, never grabbing your knee, or you can take your hands down to the floor. So here's our pyramid pose. That front knee can have a bend. It doesn't have to be straight. And in our pyramid pose, we're going to walk our hands right back up and come back to mountain. And we go to peace pose. Deep breath. Taking our hands back to our hips, going to the other side. So here's our warrior one. Square hips, knee over toe. Back leg is straight. And our arms go up. Very good. So then we circle them around. Take our hands to our hips. Hinge forward. And now we're in pyramid. Maybe a little bit below our knee. Maybe our hands go to the mat. Our knee has a soft bend. So just take a deep breath there. And out. Gently walk our hands back up and stand up tall. So today, the sun is out, which is such a blessing. So I'm going to teach you a sun salutation. So I'm going to do them for little ones first, and then I'll do an older one, which is basically an adult sun salutation. So for little ones, I usually say, reach up tall and say, hello, sun. So I wave my hands at the sun, hello. And then I reach my arms around great big sun. I take my hands to the mat. Maybe I go back to plank. I just take a deep breath in plank. And then I bend my knees, release my toes, and I go down to my belly. Press my hands into the mat. I'm lifting to cobra, and in cobra we lift like a snake. Yes. My hands go back down, and now I go back to child's pose. So my belly is super strong. And then once I'm in child's pose, I curl my toes under, I lift to down dog, I walk my feet in, and I roll up tall. Oh, that was a great sun salutation. So if you're a little older, you may want to try one that looks a little bit more like the grown-up ones. We reach up tall with an inhale. Exhale, soft bending those knees forward, forward. Inhale, hands go halfway up. And then exhale, hands to the mat. And so I'm gonna just move forward because of my room. So here's our plank. Let's take a deep breath in plank here. So maybe you can take your knees and just go straight down to your belly. Or maybe you work on a chaturanga, shifting forward. And our elbows go in towards our ribs and we go to the floor. And from here we can lift to cobra, if this is good for you. or we can take our hands by our sides, lifting up to up dog, so pressing the arches of our feet into the mat. And then from here, if you want to, bend your knees and lift up to down dog. And then from here, let's step it in. Reach up with a halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, circle, sweep those arms. And hands go to heart center. So wherever you are, let's start in this in peace pose together. Take a great big breath in and out. We're going to go to warrior two. So in warrior two, we're going to hop lengthwise on our mat. Hop. So I always like to do it that way. The toes, as I'm pointing, at the top of your mat are going to face front. I do everything with the noise that seems to get everyone where they need to be. Our knee bends. It's over our toes. And our arms go out. So this is our warrior two. So if you were at the beach or the ocean, this may look like a surfboard. You may want to do some surfing while you're there. And if you're older and you just want to stay in a warrior two and get grounded, that is perfectly fine too. So from here, we take our back hand down and our front palm goes to the sky. Shoulders go down and we go into a reverse warrior. So here's our reverse warrior. Breathing in. And then returning to our warrior two. And today, we're just going to go back to mountain pose. Very good. So now we're going to surfboard on the other side. Hands go to our hips. Hop our legs lengthwise on our mat. Top toes, face front. Bend our knee. Hands go out. So now we can surf again on this side. If you're younger, if you're older and you want to surf too, that is totally fine with me. We need some fun right now. And our leg goes straight. Back hand goes down, front palm goes to the sky, and we can 
reach up into our reverse warrior. Take a deep breath in and out. Returning to warrior two. And then for now, let's just go right to mountain pose. So however you need to get back to mountain pose is fine with me. So now we're gonna go to a forward fold. So we have a soft bend in our knees and this is ragdoll with a variation and our belly is gonna try to touch our thighs. Our head goes down, but mine is not, so I can look out and talk. So if you're younger and you wanna have jellyfish arms, you might wanna do some jellyfish arms in that ragdoll. If you're older and jellyfish arms are not for you, just take your arms down, maybe behind your calves. It's a good place for them. But here you can take a few deep breaths as well. And we're gonna roll nice and tall from our jellyfish arms. Take a great big breath in and come on down. Let's go to our knees. So we're going to, to go into dolphin pose. So as I've taught this with grade schoolers, I've heard a lot of dolphin sounds. So if you need to do a dolphin sound, that's perfectly fine. So hands go out, we're gonna link up together like this and they go down on our mat. Our pinkies can kind of tuck under if you want. So you're on your forearm, you curl your toes under, lift your hips to the sky, and here is dolphin pose. So I'm hoping you can see me. And so our dolphin pose, we can take a deep breath here as well. And come on down. Bending those knees, releasing those toes, and coming back. So um, the other pose that I would like to do, we have to be a shark. So we're going on to our prone position, we're on our belly, and our belly button goes in. So our belly button is very, very strong. And we're gonna lift our legs, our hands come together, and our elbows have to come off the floor. And make sure that belly button's in. Let's take an inhale and come on down. So if you're little and you wanna sing the Baby Shark song here, this is a great opportunity, even if you wanna pause the music, I've heard a lot of baby sharks do 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 um, for the past few years with this um, one. The other thing we can do is extend our arms out, making sure you're long in your neck. So I have mine wrong because I'm looking at you, but your neck should be nice and straight back there. So um, we have our head as an extension of our neck. Belly button in. We're going to lift our right arm and left leg and inhale and down. And our left arm, right leg, inhale, and down. And then you can start it where you're swimming. So again, don't have your head up like mine because I'm just doing that for the video. But this is Pilates swimming. And I always like to add this in um, our, my ocean theme. It's really important to get the back strength as well as a boat pose for abdominal strength because both of those things help us sit tall. Hands go by your side. Let's go back to child's pose. So my theory on sitting tall and this big posture is we take deep breaths. When we take deep breaths, moms and dads, we start to really activate that prefrontal cortex, which helps with learning. So this is this is all strength building. My um, one of my mantras in life is flexible body, flexible mind. So all of this helps us uh, learn and be able to stretch and then be able to sit tall and be able to sit still for a little bit. We don't need to be able to sit still all day. Take a deep breath in here and out. And again, let's be in our child's pose. One more breathing in and out. So now we're gonna start to slow down. Swinging our legs around, feet go out in front of us, hands go behind us, our knees are to the sky and we're just gonna swish our legs, kind of like a mermaid. But we're not going fast, so if you watch me, I'm not going fast. So we're gonna go back and forth, and back and forth. So when we need to slow down or calm down, sometimes it's really hard. Sometimes we don't have the tools to be able to slow down. So this is one of them. This is called wind washer, but today it's our mermaid. And the concept is slow rhythmic movement helps our system slow down. It helps calm us down. 
I can already feel my, my nervous system slowing down. So from here, I'm going to go back to Sukhasana. So my hands go tall. I take my starfish, so I have a starfish in my hand, and I bring it up. So starfish breath is one of my favorite breaths to teach when I get nervous and sometimes when I get worried. So let me show you starfish breath. I'm gonna take my pointer finger up, my finger up my thumb with an inhale, and then I take it down with an exhale. And breathing in, and breathing out. We're not going fast and it's not a race. Breathing in, and breathing out. And breathing in, and breathing out. Last one for right now. Breathing in, and breathing out. So how do you feel? Maybe you could tell a grown-up, or if you're older, maybe you can just check in with yourself, see how you feel. So from here, what we would usually do is go into a resting pose. My favorite pose. So we can take our legs straight out and lay down, and my rule is back belly or side, whatever resting pose looks like for you. You can pause this video, and you can take a nice rest, however that would look and um, that would be your Shavasana or resting pose. So once you're done, you'll come on back. So from here, we're, we're done with our resting pose and we're back in our Sukhasana, our um, easy pose or our crisscross applesauce, some of them call. So the last thing we usually do in yoga is say Namaste. And what it means is the light in me sees and honors the light in you. My light is respectfully saying goodbye to your light. So I've um, taught this in sign language, and so I want to show it to you right now. I'll go, I'll go slow. So it goes, the light in me. And typically we touch our face for C, but we're not going to do that today. Sees the light in you. Namaste. Thank you for so much for coming to my first video and please visit my website and we'll just go from there. Please, I hope everybody, may you be healthy, may you be safe, and may you be calm. Namaste.